A very good afternoon to you all. I'm Geetma Lelvela, the moderator for today's session. Today, we are marking off with yet another milestone of the Touch the Peak online workshop series for the Japur Annual Job Fair and Entrepreneurial Ventures 2022, organized by the Career Skills Development Society of University of Sri Jayawardenepura. We have stepped into this online workshop series with the purpose of expanding the professional guidance for undergraduates to uplift their career skills from the pioneers. Are you thinking about starting your own business? Who may be able to help you take your next step? Don't worry, we got your back. I'm sure that this workshop will help you to be a successful entrepreneur as our workshop is themed on entrepreneurial ventures. First and foremost, I would like to welcome Professor Sudat Manjula Amarasena, Director of the Career Guidance Unit and the Head of the Department of Decision Sciences in the Faculty of Management Studies and Commerce, and Mrs. Chaturangani Tenafon, Career Advisor of the Career Guidance Unit and the Senior Treasurer of the Career Skills Development Society. Next, I would like to extend a warm welcome to our resource person for today, the president of Asia Pacific Institute of Money and Entrepreneurship Development, Mr. Charmin the Kumarasiri, and my heartfelt welcome goes to all the participants, our members who joined with us today, as you are indeed the heart and soul of this workshop series. And also, I thank you for the patience for waiting to start the session. Now, let's witness a short video clip on Touch the Peak Annual Job Fair and Entrepreneurial Ventures organized by the Career Skills Development Society. We would like to take this opportunity to present our prestigious sponsors for Touch the Peak Annual Job Fair and Entrepreneurial Ventures ಸೆಷನ್ Now, without further ado, let me introduce our resource person. He is a senior chartered accountant, corporate trainer, leadership coach, management consultant, and a business advisor with a proven track record holding C 
senior leadership positions in leading local entities and multinationals. He is the president of Asia Pacific Institute of Money and Entrepreneurship Development, the founder of the Human Capital Partner, the principal consultant of HCP Consulting Private Limited. He is an independent non-executive director at Sanasi Development Bank PLC, a commission member of the Telecommunications Regulatory Commission of Sri Lanka, and an advisor to a few leading organizations. He also serves on the International Panel on Accounting Education, IPAE, as the only representative from entire South Asia. He has served on the Governing Council of CA Sri Lanka for two consecutive terms, currently serving on the Executive Committee of CA Sri Lanka, SME Task Force. Please welcome Mr. Charminda Kumarasiri to share his valuable expertise on entrepreneurial ventures. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. We are glad to have you here, sir. Thank you for inviting me for this important event. And I'm glad that I got this opportunity to talk to, I think, the right audience. Because this is the audience uh, who needs to understand this subject. And I must also congratulate the organizer for selecting a timely topic, among other things, for your uh, event. Uh, let me start with my presentation. I have put together a few slides, but my presentation is not necessarily based on the slide per se, but I just want to use them as a guidance because I know naturally when we have a session like this for a reasonable time, people expect something other than watching the face of the presenter. So. Let me quickly share the presentation, if you can allow me to do that. Yes, I think it's allowed. Right. So this is the topic we are going to discuss today, entrepreneurial ventures. And there are two words here. One is entrepreneurial. The other one is ventures. So as we go along the journey today, We'll be discussing what exactly we are discussing under each of these components and also how we can become an entrepreneur or at least understand that journey if you feel any time that you want to get into the journey. So before I get there, I take about a minute to talk about who we are. So I've been working in the corporate sector for a longer period and then I quit the corporate journey and started something on my own. Probably people can say I'm an entrepreneur but it's, it's very important to figure out how you become an entrepreneur just because you quit the job you don't become an entrepreneur. Right? You are jobless in simple terms. Right? And just because you start a business, you don't become an entrepreneur. There's a big difference between a businessman and entrepreneur. So we need to understand those things as well as you move on. So cutting the long story short in terms of why this particular institute was established, Asia Pacific Institute of Money and Entrepreneurship Development. During last five years or so more than that, I've been working heavily with the SMEs and the entrepreneurial community in Sri Lanka. And I noted there's a big vacuum in that. Before I get into the vacuum part, if you look at what is the situation of the country today, keeping politics apart, if you look at what we are facing is an economic 
turbulence. Our external reserves have declined to a, I would say, a scary level. And the country is finding it difficult to continue certain operations, difficult to operate even the essentials because of lack of adequate finances. Now, if you look at the history of Sri Lanka, I, I'm just giving this understanding for everyone's benefit. We got the open economy states in 1977. And if you go back to the history and the central bank reports, we can see we had a net surplus between import and exports. It means our exports were higher than the imports in 1977. And from the day we opened the economy, if you go back and check the central bank report, we have reversed that formula. Our imports became more than export. If you look at even before the pandemic by 2020, the central bank reports, our exports income was somewhere around $12 billion, little over $11 billion. And our imports were almost 22 plus billion dollars, which means our import bill was double the export bill. So in a layman's language, when we earn one rupees by selling our stuff to the external world, we spend two rupees to import things that we need. So mathematically, you can understand our balance come down right naturally now this has been the result of i would i wouldn't point fingers at individuals or any politicians or anything but historically this has been the result of not paying enough attention to our economic formula we have just let the floodgate open and let anything to come to the country. And you can see even we imported Vesak lanterns, skites, anything and everything we imported. Things that we can easily produce in our country. And also we let a lot of things to be substituted. So I always blame, I'm not talk, talking about this in this forum. I've been talking about this in many forums, even in mass media. And I have written to papers, I've written to various policymakers. This is a big problem. When it's true that we need to run, an, run a country with politics, but when it comes to economic decision, you need to get the formulas right, use the experts and get the models right. So eventually what has happened is we are now facing a difficulty because of lack of foreign reserves. Now, what is the solution? So we have been using different solutions, right? We've been borrowing money from different parties so that we get something out of it. And we've got some parties to invest directly, FDIs. Apart from those things, for a sustainable model, I think all of you can understand the only way out. There are three national level economic issues that we face in this country. One is we have lack of exports. Second is we have a large number of imports and to reduce that, you need to have something substitute within the country. And we also have a debt burden. So if you look at these three major economic challenges we have as a country, in my view, there is only one sustainable solution we can fix this. That is promoting entrepreneurship in this country and increase the local production. If you do that, you can have more production within the country that can be exported so that you can get more revenue and it will also substitute the imports that will allow you to reduce the import bill and it will also help when you create your excess reserves to manage your foreign debt situation. However, the unfortunate situation 
in the country is that we do not have adequate number of entrepreneurs. We have less than 3% entrepreneurs in this country. And we can see the number of youngsters who are just wasting their time on the road, probably inside a three wheeler or maybe sometimes jobless. And we always try to promote education as a tool for people to get away with their economic situation. But if you look at the education system, around 600,000 students sit the O-level exams. And out of that, there is a dropout and then around 300,000 students sit A-level exams. Out of that, around 100,000 get elected or eligible, become eligible to get into the university system, but not everyone can make it. Only up to 40,000 in the current context can make it. So what will happen to the balance? If you look at in, in a summary, from 600,000 to 40,000, there is a gap between that, what is that mathematically, it's 560,000 roughly. So if we can convert at least a percentage of this crowd as entrepreneurs, imagine the wonder we can do. So that I think is the solution, but unfortunately, we do not have a coordinated strategy covering all the components to address this issue. We can see there are different organizations at the government level cater into this segment, but what we see is there is no coordinated effort. We have bits and pieces. Even in the private sector, there are certain organizations who are attempting to support this, but not a holistic approach is found. So in my view, there has to be an entrepreneurial ecosystem that has to be built within the country with the participation of government organization, private sector and others. But we haven't seen a solid foundation up to now on that. So I felt there are two areas that we need to fix the poverty and the economic landscape of this country. One is educating people on finances, financial literacy, because people do not have adequate financial literacy to deal with the financial challenges they have. It's not just having a lower income, but the fact that they do not know how to manage what they earn. Even we talk about giving different amenities and subsidies like even Samurdi and we sometimes uh, give away certain monies even last couple of months we have noticed government is giving around 5000 rupees for those certain identified people but do they really know how to manage what they get that's the problem more than what they earn how they manage what they earn they don't have that literacy or intelligence and if we can give them that intelligence to manage what they have so they can do a better job with whatever they get rather than struggling with irresponsible spending and irrational financial decisions. The second component is the development of entrepreneurship capability in the country in a holistic manner and a methodical manner with a long term view without just showing them how to do that and then vanish without having a webinar and then vanish without launching a program with a big ceremony and then showcasing it in all the media and then after a while you don't know what has happened to that. But what we need is a proper, properly designed long term view of entrepreneurship development. And that is when we started this institute to cater to this segment. So our ambition or vision is not just the Sri Lankan context, we want to be the preferred institute for entrepreneurship development and financial literacy education in the Asia Pacific region. And with that vision in mind, we have established institute. And I'm glad that as one of the initial appearances in the public domain, we were able to join with you and 
I'm glad that we have to start, we had to start this with a bunch of youngsters who could be the future entrepreneurs of this country. So let me now move into the entrepreneurship. I don't intend talking about textbook definitions and giving different varieties of meanings of the word entrepreneurship because I think you all have heard of this enough. You can read, you can even go to Google and get it. But based on what I have just mentioned, I reiterate the fact that entrepreneurship is the primary catalyst for economic growth. That is when things originate. That is where things are added to the economy because we have mostly a consumption economy and we need a development oriented, manufacturing oriented economy. For that, we need entrepreneurs who can think differently, who can generate things and who can make use of the resources we have. We boast about countries like Japan being in the developed country pool. But if you go and see what they have in their countries, they have nothing as resources for them. They always tap into other resources, they borrow things and they use their knowledge and coordinate. They have the entrepreneurship at the highest level. They don't have most of the other components in our basic resources that we talk about. But we as a country which is blessed with such a large amount of resources, such a large pool of talent because our IQ levels are among the highest in the world. Some of the raw materials we have in this country, natural resources are the best quality. Some of the minerals are the world's purest form we have. But what do we do with them? We just dump them to someone else. Some people come and extract this. We just send the raw material and they add value. Sometimes I have heard for certain minerals we have in Sri Lanka, some people who buy them at raw level add value over a thousand times elsewhere. Why we can't do this? Because we lack this entrepreneurship capability on one side. Secondly, we lack the support system from the government and various other organizations and parties that promotes entrepreneurship within the country. So therefore, it's very important that we understand this fundamental. Also, we need to understand that it is not an overnight game. You can't produce entrepreneurs overnight. It's a journey. It's a process, but you have to pave the way, put the foundation and then put steps one by one to build that. And we have also heard, I think you must have heard when you learn this uh, subject, there's this story about uh, around 90% of the startups go for a natural death within the first three years. It is not just a fact, but how many of us actually dig deeper and try to figure out why it happens so? So we just take it as a norm. And you take, okay, out of the 100, only 10 will succeed, then let's go with that 10. Or let's take it as a reality. Oh no, I don't think so. If you look at why this 90% fail, that is because this is the most difficult time of your journey. That is where you find your own way. That is where you establish yourself. And it is a new journey for anyone who get into this path. And most of the people get out of this journey during the first three years because they don't have the capability of sustaining or in simple terms, we call it lack of endurance. Right? Endurance, that is Dharagani me Shaktiya. Because the more we go, the more we fail. That's what if you ask any successful entrepreneur during the first couple of years, how many times they fail? How many times they feel they are lost? How many times they feel they need to quit? 
and how many obstacles they have to face when they go to a government institution to get things done they get frustrated and they get uh, all kinds of challenges even the competitors start attacking because the people who are already established in the market start attacking them in different fronts they are not strong enough to sustain and we have a very little entrepreneur pool in this country therefore the non entrepreneurs cannot understand the entrepreneur life there are a lot of challenges so as a result naturally these people give up or fail during the first three years so if we can fix those problems we can successfully transform or navigate them through their journey and make them comfortable to pass that difficult period after the third year as a norm but the period can be different depending on how the entrepreneur picks up and the environmental condition if you take three years as a norm if we can handhold them in some form during that period i'm sure that they will pick up and more so if we can have a target for ourselves we are going to change this formula we are going to reduce this 90 percent dropout rates and we will we will improve at least it to 50 percent so we can have that mission so my intention and the team who work with me my organization my governing board and the rest of the people who work with us our intention is to make sure that we build sustainable entrepreneurs who will sustain during the difficult times and then come up with their own entrepreneurship journey so if you look at the historical evolution of this i don't go too far because we can look at this concept of entrepreneurship even before but although we call it entrepreneurship that is pure business right ventures we had business we had yeah, enough evidence in the history we talk about the merchant of venice and we talk about in uh, even in our jataka potter right uh, in even in buddha's time and even before we talk about different stories about traders so that means there has been this trading stuff long ago but whether the real entrepreneurial models that we talk about the entrepreneur that we talk about whether those were available or was the question mark of course in practice there would have been but there was no much recognition and identification of the characteristics and then model it so if you look at 1960s we had this business large business model because not everyone could afford to have a business for them so you float a uh, organization for manufacturing purpose mostly to support the industrial uh, growth and then we have large organization and then you go a little further then the economies get little disturbed even the world war also affected certain crisis that disturbed the system they all got affected and then we had that volatile economic climate and at the same time there was this technological revolution this is where I talk about the technological revolution and even the basic computers we talk about today uh, have begun and there were a certain programs and technologies that we talk about the birth happened somewhere in 1970s and then we go to the next level there is more control from the government and various other parties because the trade became much more complicated and there were a lot of disputes malpractices frauds and various other complications then the regulator regulations emerged and as a result the operations of large organizations disturbed to a certain extent so that people start floating smaller companies sometimes smaller businesses outside the legal framework without getting affected with the legal framework for the large organization then another variable came into the picture with the challenges faced by the organizations especially the manufacturing oriented organizations people started feeling the job security issues from two sides one side 
some organizations struggle to operate with the competition and various other challenges so they have to be they had to think about layoffs and etc and the other variable is that the technology took over most of the tasks and as a result they replaced the human factor so then people started feeling the need for alternative options to earn their livelihood than working for someone else and then the services became much more important even today we talk about developed economies when you say develop you have a larger proportion of your income coming from the service sector so then that's the catalyst i must say to have this entrepreneurship mindset small businesses working on your own kind of concepts and it continues even today now we talk about the entrepreneurship more than ever because that there are a lot of reasons why people think about it not just because of economic reason but also in terms of quality of life and various other aspirations now people find enough ways and means that they can operate at a small scale even individually without being part of a large organization to serve and today individuals can serve a global market while sitting in your bedroom you don't have to be a large organization if you look at in today's context most of the organization who take some of the large scale uh, online content are supplied by sometimes individuals even in sri lanka we have large number of individuals who are operating in this online business and there is this entrepreneur online entrepreneur club if these youngsters who are here today if you don't know there is a club called online entrepreneur club in sri lanka their membership is over 60000 right but they are not small small timers they are well to do youngsters with their online businesses right they have uh, iits they have bmws right but very young that's how you supply you can be an individual serving a large organization through the current economic context and that is when we talk about this entrepreneurial capabilities much more than ever now even when you start schooling those days we used to say when someone asks from you who you want to become right you say i want to be a doctor i want to be an engineer i want to be an accountant i want to be a banker those were the buzzwords we had now people started thinking about becoming their becoming an entrepreneur right i want to have my own business one day so we have come to that era but the problem with the education system is that we are still not yet ready we are still not ready in the curriculum and various other aspects to support that of course there are certain elements coming into the curriculum bits and pieces talking about entrepreneurship and giving some idea but we don't have a targeted education system if someone says during the grade bond maybe even after scholarship i want to become a carpenter we don't have that mechanism to build a carpenter that we still push the person to go ahead and do your o levels with all the subject and then after a level you can think of who you want to be something like that so let's park that for the time being so this is the journey that we are still going through today right now entrepreneur so i'm not going to talk about definitions right so one thing we need to understand here is that there's a difference between a businessman and an entrepreneur right so we should not mix the two so we can see certain people start their own businesses their own ventures just because you start a business you don't become an entrepreneur you are a businessman you can become an entrepreneur if you are more than a businessman right so entrepreneur is not a person who just imitate what someone else is doing right if someone is having a saloon and you see the saloon you replicate the saloon and you start a saloon as well so you are not an entrepreneur you are a businessman if you want to get into the entrepreneur category you have to be little more than that 
you have to have the strategic thinking capability you have to have the ability of thinking differently you should come up with something different you should come up with something novel and also you as an individual need to have certain traits or certain qualities within you that you generally don't find in a typical businessman right so one of the things is your motivation level or what we call is the passion so the motivation level of an entrepreneur is so high that they don't need someone else to come and boost you up right so most of the people when they are down somebody need to come and bring up their morale but an entrepreneur is a person who already have it and the person has the ability and the capability to self motivate and also this is the type who has a great deal of self confidence this is very interesting part among entrepreneurs because of that reason because i have studied this even in sri lankan context with my past experience i have been dealing with a uh, large number of entrepreneurs at different levels so when i engage with them i also study and observe and i make my own notes one thing i have observed with this self confidence factor is that they have a confidence about themselves first the fact that they have chosen their path is the right decision so that they will stick to their guns they will not quit under any circumstance they will somehow determine to go along with the journey despite the challenges secondly they also have a confidence about the success of the business they feel this will become a successful business the magic or the trick is that they don't hope the business to be successful they determine by themselves that i am going to make this a successful business and that is where the energy is people don't they, they don't go and pray for things they make it happen and because of that very reason these people are little stubborn in singhala we say dadabbara you know so those dadabbara people can become entrepreneurs because they generally do not listen to everyone they believe in their dreams they don't just listen to everyone else and say okay if someone say it doesn't work don't try this you know no one has ever tried this i also tried my father also tried uh, it, it doesn't work just give up you go and have your you know do your job so there are people who will always come and disturb you and a uh, pull your leg but this is the type of people who will never carried away they will get carried away because someone else is pulling your leg or giving you something so you stick to your guns and also the endurance that is very important endurance means the ability to sustain or withstand the challenges daragani me hakia and for that reason i must say in sri lankan context i have observed and which is which is common to many asian countries and i think the rest of the world would be the same the chances the the, uh, the chance of female entrepreneurs failing is very less compared to male entrepreneurs because the female entrepreneurs have the capacity to hold on sustain because it's coming from their very nature you know as we know how uh, we explain about the mother right the ability of a mother to withstand the pain and the difficulties and that feature is there with females they do not give up easily and what i have seen even in sri lankan entrepreneurs i'll give you one example i can give you hundreds of examples if any of you have heard of this company called lanka harness private limited right uh because you all are on uh, zoom i can even ask you to raise your hand and see if any one of you know this company can i see a show of hands you can use a hand tool does anyone know this company hmm 
not anyone. Now, this company is led by one Mr. Rohan Parlevatta, a popular character during the presidential election time. Right? He was one of the candidates. Uh, now, if you go back to the history of this company, this company is the one that produces the chip, microchip that activates the airbag of the vehicles. They, they, they create that, they manufacture the chip that is the sensor that activates the airbag when a vehicle meets with an accident. And if you ask me, the brands who purchase their sensors, you name a brand, all of them buy from them. Toyota, Nissan, Mitsubishi, all the branded vehicles purchase their airbag sensor from this company. Now imagine a country like Japan who claims to have the best of the best technological advancements can, could not beat the quality level that this company produces, that chip. But the origin of this company is not that sweet. And I have heard of this man several times and every time I hear his story, I get inspired. He said he, he had traveled to Japan for something else and he had a visit to these companies and observed how these things are working and he has determined to do something and he wanted to export something to this country when he come back. And he has done a sample of this chip and he has sent it to because the, those days he didn't have contacts with the top notchers, he has sent this to whatever the contact he has through courier or whatever the channel. He has sent a letter, no response. He has sent it again, waited for a couple of months, no response. He has sent it again, wait for a couple of months, no response. Now, how many times do you think this guy has done this? In our case, if we send it once, twice, thrice, we give up. Right? You give up no point in trying because I'm wasting my time, no one is interested. As I remember, my count might be wrong because I have heard him last several, like, several years ago, therefore I don't remember the exact count. He said somewhere around the 11th time as I remember when he sent the sample, he got a response to say that they have received and they'll get back or something. That is around the 11th time or something after spending so many months sending the sample again and again and again. And that was the starting point. Thereafter, there is a, another journey which I don't intend explaining now. Now imagine that he gave up third time or fourth time, even the fifth time. He can't become what he is today. So that is the type of characters you can find or the features you can find in entrepreneurs. Right? They generally don't give up. They believe in their dream. And also, they have high level of energy. I'm not saying they are like bodybuilders, but they are always motivated, fresh and ready to work. If you have heard of Almost all the successful entrepreneurs, even Sri Lankan context, they talk about their original uh, journey, they, how they became entrepreneurs. They talk about we used to work till, till the morning, the following day. I have interviewed so many entrepreneurs in Sri Lanka. All of them had this bitter truth. They have something to say in the early stages. They do not think about their food. They don't think about their sleep. They don't think about anything else but focus on it. So they have the energy. So that energy comes from where? That energy comes from passion. Passion. So I think you must have heard of this uh, nice uh, saying. When you work more than what you can work in the normal circumstance, you get stressed. But how come certain people do that beyond their normal levels? They have sleepless nights. They do things that they otherwise would not want to. That is because your mindset, that is the passion. So when you work for something beyond your limits, that is called your passion. 
and that is the driving force for an entrepreneur and there are various other things i can talk about but these are a few key things that we need to understand what make you an entrepreneur there's one more thing that is they are risk takers they are risk takers right you can't become an entrepreneur if you are not willing to take risk because you are trying to start a journey that you haven't traveled before and you have no idea where you are going to end up the challenge is is not only about building a business is also you are trying to go on a journey also by paving the way also by yourself you have to create the road for you and then you have to travel in that road no one else will create that road for you therefore you take that risk and if you don't take that risk you can't succeed so sometimes if you go and ask from some of the entrepreneurs how sure are you that you will earn something out of it can you show me your numbers can you show me when you are going to get your money when you are going to uh, pick up your business sometimes they don't have an answer for this but only thing they know is that they'll somehow make it happen they take that risk and even this current context if anyone is complaining about the environment economy the challenges they are not fit to be entrepreneurs because entrepreneur is someone who sees everything as part of the game if you see a challenge if you see an obstacle if you see a turbulence in the environment that is part of the game and you should be able to understand the variables and then align yourself to continue and that is what you can see among many people who have become successful when everyone else is blaming and crying about the crises and difficulties there are people who have succeeded and even i know several businesses there may be many who have made their highest ever revenue highest ever profit the most successful period in their business during the pandemic because they took the challenge they redefined their business and they capitalize the opportunity right then there are different types of entrepreneurs because this is not a theoretical thing but i just quickly take you through because it's very important to understand that as well because we can see we park everyone in the same bucket and say entrepreneur so what type is called novice entrepreneur that is a newbie right that means this person has no prior experience in running an own business none of the members in the family even had a business so they have no idea about what this entrepreneurship is all about they are coming to the field as freshers without having any family background either then we have the second category called habitual entrepreneurs that means you already have experienced the journey you already have couple of businesses and you are now getting into another business they keep on uh, entering into a new business then we have another category nascent entrepreneurs now this category uh they are not, these are not mutually independent this category can be either a novice or a habitual at time explained earlier now this is the type who are in the middle now you have started the journey you are now in the process of starting a new business right so you can be habitual it can be novice and then we also find serial entrepreneurs you must have heard of this now these type of entrepreneurs what they do is they float a company right they start a company they grow it and then milk it and close it or sell it right so that's what they do so they have a business you close it and you start another business 
probably you buy a traditional business you close it by another so they keep on renewing their entrepreneurial journey and they make money out of it so so it's it's uh, you can see mostly in the tech startup that happens right you float a company build it sometimes you list it in the stock exchange then you exit you take your money back then we have another category called portfolio entrepreneur this type you keep on adding to your portfolio you don't sell your business you keep the business and then you add another you built several businesses right sometimes it can be related some can be sometimes it can be unrelated so we have a lot of uh, family businesses like that in sri lankan context because when you earn a lot of money you keep on investing in various places you end up having a lot of businesses but then again you have to understand having a lot of businesses won't make you successful you become much more complicated you become much more stressful you also increase your risk levels unless you have a proper governance mechanism in running those businesses i have seen many people who have got into that trouble they kept on investing on businesses as they get money but end up being a uh, you know failure because they can't manage the uh, portfolio due to various reasons right so you can have further categories you know different textbooks can have different uh, definitions but i don't want to get into all these complications i just want to highlight this right now we have heard of this term entrepreneurship versus entrepreneurial right entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial so entrepreneurship is a process entrepreneur is a person entrepreneurship is a process so the process is identifying an opportunity and then you test it then you collect the resources and then you go for the business that means you start the business entrepreneurship is creating that business venture the entrepreneur real we also we, you, this is an is kind of a adjective right you don't have to be an entrepreneur to have this it's about having a certain mindset we even talk about entrepreneurial mindset among employees of organizations that means when you are an entrepreneur when you have an entrepreneurial mindset you function in an organization as if you own the business then you take personal responsibility and ownership to drive the business goals and you take personal responsibility to manage cost for example when you are running your own business and you go to the office you see there is a room no one inside the room there is lights and fan on what do you do if it's your business you will go inside and switch it off because you feel it but if you are working in an organization you are in the hr department you pass the finance department you see no one is inside you see the fan is on lights are on you just pass it because that's not your business but if you have the entrepreneurial mindset even in that organization working as an employee you will still feel it you go and switch it off because you feel it as your own business and this is the capability we must build among our employees in any organization so that you can manage businesses much more successfully now this particular slide i showed as a you know completeness i think we all know this i will not take time it's not a straight forward line like this it has so many obstacles and that's why i told you earlier entrepreneur really understand the journey they know that they have to go through all this and this is the first three year cycle i told you they need to go through all this if they don't know this the moment you fall into any of these holes you think that's the end of your life no real entrepreneurs know that all these are part of the game and they keep on moving until they reach the stable point right then we if you can remember i discussed about the the starting point the topic it's not just entrepreneur or entrepreneurship we talk about entrepreneurial ventures there's a difference between entrepreneurial ventures and small business because most of the time every business starts small right except in large corporate starting a big business or venture all of a sudden any business starts as a small business so we need to distinguish between a small business and entrepreneurial ventures right 
business and entrepreneurship. That's what I'm saying. So small business, yeah, independently owned, operated, finance, and you have fewer number of employees, and you know, you don't go much about these innovations and all this stuff. You just run the business. And then your impact on the industry is relative because you are just a player. You are just one player among other players in the market doing a business. You start a saloon, you become a member of the fraternity who runs saloons. You start a grocery, you are another business selling grocery items. But the entrepreneurial ventures may be running a small business at this uh, initial stages, but it has different features. Organizations pursuing opportunities because you capitalize on opportunities. And you are characterized by innovative practices. That's very important. Innovative practices. Because this type of businesses see the opportunities and they try to create a blue ocean. If you have heard of, there are two strategic moves for our business, red ocean and blue ocean. Blue ocean is where you go in the non-traditional way. You don't go and compete with the rest of the players. You create your own space and you have your own market. You are a unique venture, right? So you identify the opportunity and then you have innovative practices. Now, I'll give you very interesting uh, uh, example. So all of us are now very uh, fond of this Kachapadam zone, right? And the dance, the moves. So look at that vendor. He's just exchanging old items for peanuts. Even in Sri Lanka, we know there are, they don't sell peanut, but they pay money and they take, you know, broken stuff and all that. But this guy had an innovative way of doing it. Now see how this guy became a global celebrity, right? Because of his innovative way of doing the business. Same way when we run any business, the entrepreneurial ventures, they always look at something differently. They don't want to go the traditional way. They always look at things. Either your product is different, either how you deliver the product is different, or your branding is different, or anything, right? That is different and unique so that there is something special about your business. People will go into it. And they also, entrepreneurial ventures, are business minded mostly because they always focus on clear goals and then they have profitability and growth prospect. Otherwise, you can't create sustainability. And there's another feature in entrepreneurial ventures compared to small businesses. They are relatively high risk because you are getting into new waters, new businesses, but at the same time, with the high risk, you get high return because if they become successful, it's a major hit. So their growth is not linear. Their growth is exponential. You know what exponential growth is. They will have a struggling period, stable growth, and then probably some hiccups. Then after a particular point, they start picking up. That's what happened to even Zoom, right? What even today we are using the Zoom platform. If you go and see their revenue, how it grew exponentially during the pandemic period. Right. Then what are the components? If you want to have an entrepreneurial venture, it's even similar to small business, but I'm just taking the very high level things only. Right. You need an entrepreneur on one side. You need an opportunity to capitalize. You need resources. You need strategy. You need the organization of the business and more importantly, with everything put together, you need the proper business plan. This business plan will capture all ingredients that are required to address. The horizon can be different. It can be for a shorter period, maybe a longer period, but this business plan is the key that will drive you because sometimes it might work when you have everything in your head. It has worked before in certain places, but in today's context, you need to have a proper business plan with all key elements. 
is not just a filling of templates but having the key elements inside in it and as i told you for entrepreneurial venture to become successful there has to be an entrepreneurial ecosystem that supports it because these startups cannot source everything that they require for their business by themselves there has to be some support there has to be some areas that they cannot afford right for example they need some options alternatives for financing they can always go for bank loans they have to have certain alternative methods of financing which is lacking even in sri lankan context that's where these venture capital funds and equity funds uh, there are different models in other countries in sri lanka we are now starting at small scale but we need that then we need a human capital when you say human capital two fold one is in number second is in talent right you need that for organization then there has to be organizations and mechanism that provides education and training for these people otherwise what happens is this is again another reason why businesses fail when people get a bright idea they start a business they know about the business they know about the product but they don't know how to run a business for example we see there are people who start who, who goes for these uh, programs you have wedding cakes and beauty culture right you go for courses how to make wedding cakes how to make cakes or whatever how to uh, you know uh, do a bridal salon you get those training how to do hair how to do makeup and all that you go for that training you know how to do makeups you know how to make cakes but do you know how to run a business because most of the cases what happens is they go and learn this technical or the operational part but they don't know how to run a business as a business there are, there are governance requirements and even in sri lankan context among the lowest in the sole proprietorship based 80 to 90% of the sole proprietorship businesses don't maintain proper books of accounts they don't know how to maintain and they don't know the value of it and that is part of the governance right so that is why some of these people get into trouble when their businesses get their volume get affected their products get affected their markets get affected they get excited and they sometimes completely shut down the business because they don't have a business model they only have a business and you need support for market especially when a, when a new business is started there has to be some guidance so some space for them to test their products and then sell their market because if they straight away get into the competitive market the existing players will uh wash them out right then you need policy and regulations to protect them so for example one of the problems i see in the small business or entrepreneurial ecosystem in sri lankan context even when someone start a bright idea i have found many people who are running businesses their own creations their own formula they have a nice product but they haven't taken patent they don't know about patent they don't know they don't know how to take it even so this type of regulatory cover somebody has to provide and make sure these people are protected and then advisory and mentory support as i told you every person who runs a business might not be an expert in everything they might be an expert in a, in developing the product but they are not, they are not, they are not expert in negotiating with banks they are not expert in negotiating with another venture they are not expert in handling people they are not expert in handling legal matters so there has to be someone hand holding guiding them during this period and there has to be technology when you say technology one easy to understand easy to use technology two affordable technology because these sme startup they cannot afford a large sum of money for high tech state of the art technological solutions there has to be some mechanism to cater to them so i will not take time in discussing this i have written a paper article on this if anyone is interested you can type even on google uh sme ecosystem at the topic as i remember is building sme ecosystem i have written about three articles so by now to daily ft mm -hmm. enabling sme ecosystem 
right if you type that you can get the articles one of these articles i have talked about this as well uh, the national level we have this issue i have spoken about sme part but even at entrepreneurship level it doesn't exist the availability of a national entrepreneurship development policy framework in this country at a national level we have bits and pieces and we don't have a single dedicated agency to formulate and coordinate overall policies and strategies for entrepreneurs we have again bits and pieces we have several ministries several ministers several departments no coordinated effort non availability of a national database of our entrepreneurs or smes we don't have when decision making is done we are clueless most of the decisions are taken on a gut feeling basis non availability of a single window and this was one of the uh election promises as well from the incumbent government i have reminded several times it's there in the uh document but it is not done yet non existence of a credit guarantee institution mechanism i see there are certain mechanisms uh, currently in progress to get this because this is very important because at smes and startup you have to go to a bank to source your funding but you have you don't have a security they ask do you have a building or a land you can pledge and get the loan they don't have all of them they don't have a credit uh, crib record there has to be some guarantee for the bank by some third party to facilitate this none of it of a common definition of even for smes we don't have a definition for smes in sri lanka we have different definition by different organization but we don't have a national level definition non eligible of sme rating agencies credit bureau because this will support getting finances low cost collateral free lending institutions and non eligible adequate equity financing option these are a few high level issues that we have in the country we need solutions at the same time we need to work on other things right now entrepreneurship is not about running a business i told you now i think you must have heard you must have seen right in your villages or various places that you have people having this vegetable stores food stores maybe you have your neighbors you must have seen your their grandfather used to have this vegetable store their father and son the same size same store they buy vegetable sell vegetable that's it the store is the same no growth but they survive that's it this is not entrepreneurship Right? This is just surviving, right? Buying and selling business. If you are a real entrepreneur, you should be able to transform your business, right? Over the period, right? You have to go to a different level. If you don't see the transformation, you are not being entrepreneurial. And that is why we need to build this entrepreneurial capacity even among just business people, right if they know this capability if they know these techniques they can convert their business to much more value adding it and you know the amount of waste of fruits and vegetables in this country at different places different parts of this country why can they find a mechanism to transport this or maybe convert those stuff into a different form and preserve without just selling or without just throwing it away as garbage right see another level of transformation right you start a business you convert the business and this is being entrepreneurial right how you convert your business into a different level and for that to be done for you to become a successful sustainable entrepreneur you need three legs or three pillars you know for a stool to stand still without any shoe you need at least three legs what are the three legs you need to have a sustainable business first and foremost i'll start from the right hand side because i use bcp to for easy uh reference bcp i start with p p is passion you need to have passion if you want to become an entrepreneur and run a business because passion is the gel that keeps you glued to the business if you are not attached to the business if you don't believe in the business if you are engaged embedded in the business you can you, you are not engaged or embedded in the business you cannot run this business 
that's when because when difficulties come you start feeling like quitting you, you feel like giving up because you don't have the passion you only had the business interest if you are passionate about something you do not give up until you make it happen so you don't mind going through any difficulty any hardship to make it happen that's what the passion can do when you run a business then you also need competency let's say passion is you are very fond of doing this let's say i have a passion to become a singer right passion alone won't make you a singer you need competence right i have a passion but i can't sing i am only a bathroom singer right no one can listen to me when i sing then your passion won't help you you also need competence capability to do this so when you run a business it follows the same you have the passion and then you have the competency this competency can be either your own competency or you can hire the required competency that is also fine for example you want to start a food business right uh, home delivery system you deliver lunch packets to homes you don't know how to cook doesn't matter you hire a good cook that's fine as long as you get the competence your business point of view you are done with it so you have the passion you have the competence these two alone may, won't make a successful business the third element is you need the business model your passion competence should be supported by business model and this is where we sometimes call uh, artists are poor right they are passionate about their job they have the competence but they are not very rich because not everyone has a business model that's why only few artists are rich they are financially stable because they know how to convert their passion and competence into a business model right i'll give you an example don't take me wrong because i don't have any personal uh, preference or anything i'm just showing you right you you take a person like iraj right he is a musician and he is a businessman so he has taken the music industry to a different level as a business he earns millions of money the way he operate the music industry within his business model whether you like it him or like him or not whether you like his songs or not that's a different story but that but not everyone in the music industry is having that level of financial capability or the business model so that is how you blend the three if you blend these three together you get a successful business model if you don't have a business with all these three things coming together that business cannot succeed that business cannot continue for future when you take business model it has so many components if any one of you are interested i have in my youtube i have a uh, lot of videos in one series of videos i have explained the entire business model canvas and how you build it you can go through and understand you can even refer any other material so understand this thing so i just prepared this just in case i happen to uh, give you a exercise but today in time time doesn't permit us therefore i will skip this exercise so my time is up therefore that's it from my side because now it's q and a time right i have stopped my presentation now now i am allowing the audience to ask your questions and if there is any comment that you want to give or even if you have any suggestions or you challenge any of the things that i mentioned i'm more than happy to correct myself or learn if there is any uh, wrong statement or a concept that i have explained so with that i conclude my presentation part and i uh, open the forum for questions so that i can respond thank you thank you very much sir for sharing your valuable insights and your experiences i am pretty sure that those will indeed lead us 
to a better competency level. Now let's move on to the Q&A session. Our first question is, if our business company have the negative publicity whenever, how are we dealing with it? Right. So first, it depends on which stage are you in your journey. Let's say you are a company or a business who already have built a brand in the market. People know about you. You are a known brand or a known company. Then how negative publicity affects is different because if you are a reputed known company, if somebody or some organization or whatever publish something detrimental to you, negative to you, you can respond differently. So maybe you can make a public statement or you can use your official channels to put the correct statement, right? So, so the, by doing that, you at least trying to mitigate the impact. But if you want to handle the negative publicity itself, you also need to look at, because this is a very broader question you have asked, if you give me a specific example that I can respond to you, this negative publicity can be based on a social media post. Somebody has put a Facebook post right against you or some newspaper has published an article that is factually incorrect or some person has made a statement in public about the organization likewise. So depends on which path and you know there are even organizations in Sri Lanka who help you in managing your public image. Right. This organization also has certain tools they can scrutinize using keywords and various other tools the things that are circulated in the public domain. They will search and let you know there are 10 Facebook page, uh, Facebook posts against your, uh, your company connected to this particular thing or there is a newspaper article, there is this and that. So these people come and tell you that they have monitored it and also if you are seeing something in the public domain, in the mass media, what large organizations do, big corporates, what they do is they use the influential power and connection with connection and communicate with the top layer of those organizations and categorically request not to publish any negative, factually incorrect statement and you stop at that level before it is published. And if somebody has published, you can take legal actions, right? But the, that those are all res, uh, what you call reactive things. But the proactive thing would be, you keep on sending good signals, positive things about your organization to the market. Sometimes certain cases, your silence is the best answer, right? Let people talk bad about you, but you keep quiet and do the good things, right? So that, that's, that's, that's one way of handling it. May it be personal, may it be organizational, that's one strategy you can follow as well. But if this person can tell me exactly what the question you have, I can answer. I just gave a very broader sense thing. But very important, when you run an organization, you maintain your public image in the right shape. For example, when I say public image, both the organization and your person. If you are a business owner, people go to your Facebook page, you see all your nasty faces in the Facebook, right? all parties, the bad things you do, it's on Facebook. But in the business, you have a nice, you know, full suit in your website, you are the business owner. But when you go to the Facebook, they see who you really are. So maintain your public image is very important in social media in today's context. If you have, if you want to maintain your brand image in your organization. Yes, I think I have given a reasonable answer. If that is not adequate, please let me know. I will uh, add. Thank you very much, sir. A little reminder to the participants, please submit the Google form that our organizing committee has shared in the chat box to register for the certificate of participation. Then let's move on to the next question. According to the current situation of Sri Lanka, how can entrepreneurs win their business path as a successful entrepreneur? Number one, let the crisis be outside. Don't get it to your head, right? That's the number one, right? If you get the crisis into your head, you can't do anything. So you have to keep your 
head straight and cool right that's the reality second thing is read the environment understand don't panic don't just run because everyone else is running like that uh, you know this story we have heard of this this rabbit and the uh, fruit you know so don't just run because everyone else is running you stop to a proper scan understand what's going on and more importantly how what's going on impacts on your business right everyone else might get affected but your business is affect it might be affecting differently understand the impact on your business then you need to rationalize your business rationalize means rationalization can happen at product level process level and organizational level as well say for example if you feel that your business has large number of products and in the current context it's difficult to man maintain and manage the entire portfolio because of the supply side issues delivery side issues and various issues you cut down your portfolio if you have 15 items you cut down to five and operate with that five and you need to identify what five products am i going to operate within the next couple of months or what depending on the situation and you rationalize your operating model and more importantly don't make emotional decisions right you have to make your decisions factually if you don't have that capability or if you have a doubt always consult someone who is good at that right don't take hasty decisions i have seen many businesses taking hasty decisions and they get into even further trouble there's a story right made in kota dagalande ma tawat terena wage right the more you the more you uh, try to dance or you know struggle the more you uh, sink so therefore you have to stay calm face the situation yes thank you very much sir we have another question what are the institutes that we can get help to grow our startups is there any places to get fund or validate our startups are there any mentors that we can reach there are many organizations there are many organizations both in the common sector private sector and there are not for profit organizations and there are various forums as well uh, it depends on what type of a business you are say for example if you are in the it sector icta icta has their programs so the information communication technology agency they are the premium body in sri lanka on it related stuff so they have uh, different programs i am also part of their program we are partners and even uh, uh, the day before yesterday we had a session with them uh, we they have identified around 600 uh, tech startups and they are giving free mentoring ship for them right and there are other organizations that is for it uh, various other organizations for different uh, businesses even the garment sector we have different organizations like said uh, that is uh, small enterprise division attached to the ministry of sports and we also have i am also part of this i am in the executive committee of ca sri lanka sme task force chartered institute they have launched with the with the partnership of various other institute including aat slt and various other bodies are aligned with it we have a mentoring model they are chartered accountants and aat members they act as mentors to support businesses what you said so if you have any requirement uh, you can connect uh, any of those people to me i will uh, direct them to this task force and they will see how far they can support and they can assign to mentors there are various other things as well but depending on the type of your business uh, it depends or it, it varies thank you very much sir well then i think we do not have further questions from our audience thank you mr chamind kumar sir once again for answering all the questions as we are close to the end of today's session we would now like to get some valuable feedback from our audience you can either unmute yourself or use the chat box area to share your thoughts about the session good afternoon sir thank you so much uh, 
Thank you very much, sir. Actually, this is an amazing session. We got fully idea about entrepreneurial venture. Thank you so much again, sir. Uh, contribute this kind of sessions. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm quite sure that this guidance helped you to dive into the minds of entrepreneurs and learn their ways to success. Also, we all learned how to unleash our true potential and become the best version of ourselves as we advance into the future. So I deem it a great honor to propose the word of thanks for this valuable session. First and foremost, I would like to thank our resource person today. Thank you very much, dear sir, for spending your immensely valuable time to be here with us today and sharing your broader knowledge with us, your in-depth knowledge and invaluable expertise and experience altogether is indeed a perception to us. I express my deep sense of gratitude to Professor Sudat Manjula Amrasena, the director of the Career Guidance Unit, and the head of the Department of Decision Sciences of Faculty of Management Studies and Commerce for the guidance, encouragement, and support that you have given, making our efforts a success. Also, my heartfelt gratitude goes to Mrs. Chaturangani Tenagon, Career Advisor of the Career Guidance Unit and Senior Treasurer of the Career Skills Development Society for extending your helping hand in the moments of need. I thank all the members of the organizing committee for all the support in making this event a success and we would like we would like all to convey our gratitude to mr sahan pereira computer programmer of the career guidance unit faculty coordinators and everyone who helped for your immense support and last but not the least i would like to thank our amazing audience our loving members for joining us today to make this session a success. Thank you very much for your support and your presence throughout this workshop series. With that, we shall mark the end of the final workshop of Touch the Peak online workshop series for the Japura Annual Job Fair and Entrepreneurial Ventures 2022, organized by the Career Skills Development Society of University of Sri Jayawardenepura. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me and all the very best to everyone and we would like to continue to support you individually and as an organization and we are more than happy please get in touch thank you thank you all the best. Thank you.